Um, my name is Lauren Pickard. I'm going to speak on GHK and diseases of aging. First, I'd like to thank the Aging Association here for inviting me to speak. Um, this is the 16th anniversary of the association. And 16 years ago, I was buying a new boat. And as a scientist, I always looked for strange coincidences. And I didn't know what to name the boat. It ended up being named Regenerate. Um, I and my little daughter were collecting omega-3 fats. And she's now a college student. Now, my training is in chemistry and mathematics at University of Minnesota and biochemistry at UC San Francisco. I've done research in Minnesota and Santa Barbara at UCSF and then at the uh, Benaroya Institute in Seattle. In 1985, I set up Prosite Corporation to develop wound healing products and that was later sold. And in 1994, I founded Skin Biology for Wound Healing Again and Cosmetic Skin Care. The GHK is a tripeptide. It's glycyl histolysine. It has a very high affinity for copper. To the left, you can see the, the molecule. It's an X-ray structure where it winds around the copper. It, this peptide will bind copper about 10 million times more than a random peptide. The interest in aging is in human plasma, the, the amount of peptide in the plasma drops 60% be, between age 20 and age 60. Now, it's in all tissues of the body. It's in the blood plasma, the saliva, the urine. It has many, many regenerative and anti-inflammatory actions. Much of this only became apparent in the last few years. And it's generated during tissue breakdown, and it triggers the resynthesis of new tissue and the remodeling. Now, first, I should say something about copper and health. In the 1970s, can we get that out of there? What's that? Oh, okay, it's right here. Okay, okay. Thank you. In the 1970s, there was a misconception that excessive copper caused many diseases such as cancer, heart disease, psychosis, and you used to have books come out, health books, would say grandpa was drinking from copper pipes and he went crazy. So the USDA set up a study in the 1980s They put 20 men on a low copper diet to see if it would improve the, uh, the cardiovascular risk, risk factors such as cholesterol. In one month they stopped the study of the 20 men. They had three three heart attacks during that one month and one death on the low copper diet. Okay, show me. That came up because you pushed one of these buttons here. If it okay. Again, you just, you do that. okay, fine. Since then, there have been many, many studies on copper, especially since 1990, and they've consistently found low tissue copper is causative or associated with cardiovascular disease, pain, aneurysms, diabetes, anemia, arthritis, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, obesity, tissue inflammation, protein glycation, cancers, osteoporosis, and things like Alzheimer's brain plaques. Now there's, I'll give you an example, there was a th idea about 20, 25 years ago that copper caused cancer. It was in books all over the place. And finally studies were done on it and higher dietary and tissue copper reduces spontaneous cancer formation. Alzheimer's, there's a physician in Germany who was writing books that copper caused Alzheimer's disease. The best labs in Germany, Canada, and the U.S. looked at it, decided the opposite was true. And there's actually been a study set up in Germany where Alzheimer's patients are giving copper supplements to see if they do better. Now the problem, the reason there was so much confusion here is under many, many disease conditions, the amount of copper in plasma rises and increases. And the problem is 95% of the copper in plasma is in the antioxidant protein, such as ceruloplasm, and these rise under stress and disease. There's a small fraction which about 5% of the copper 
that exchanges the copper with, actively with tissues, and this is in the protein albumin and in GHK. And this decreases with diseases. So it's very difficult to measure this small amount of copper, the transport copper, but this is what is critical. Now, what's the link between GHK and degenerative disease of aging? GHK was discovered during aging reversal experiments that started in 1962. The first paper that led to this was presented in the 7th International Congress of Gerontology in 1964. So I've been at this a bit. What we're looking at was the blood clotting and changes with age. And we're looking at the plasma protein fibrinogen, and this rises with age in cardiovascular disease. High fibrinogen reduces tissue perfusion, and fibrinogen levels are an excellent predictor of future death mortality. And in the contrast, the other protein albumin serves to control this goes down with age. So it's a complicated slide, but my experiments were, well, why does the liver increase the fibrinogen to albumin ratio with age? I was able to obtain liver tissue from people 20 to 25 years old and 60 to 80 years old, and I would do, I would incubate it with plasma from young people and older people. And the surprise of this, if I took the blood plasma from young people and used the older tissue, that the older tissue would function like young tissue, and the converse was true. You took young tissue and you put it with older plasma and it, the tissue acted like older tissue. We assumed when we started that there was a change in the tissue with aging. It was virtually all in the plasma. By 1973, I isolated the factor here. It was this GHK copper. I did not know what it did. It kept cells alive. It had some strange effects in cell culture. But by 1984, I was able to file a patent application on regenerative and anti-inflammatory actions of GHK. Now, the effects of GHK in, in mammals, this is from many laboratories, it activates skin remodeling, wound healing, increases hair follicle enlargement, protects the liver from poisoning. It, it repairs and protects both the stomach lining and the intestinal lining. So what does it do? In 1999, a group at the University of Reims in France predicted that it was a remodeling factor. That is, after initial injuries, such as you get a cut or something, remodeling is a later stage of the healing. And they did this based purely on biochemical actions. See, in wound healing, there's an early stage, it's inflammatory, scar form, and fast. The remodeling stage is very slow and takes months to years. Skin remodeling is very active in young children. Around the age of 20, it seems to stop, and if we get a scar, it lasts for a very long time. Now, the direct evidence we got that it is a skin remodeling factor, there were six studies in recent years, women in their 50s, about 270 subjects,